Hello and welcome to Pipe TV, where we extend the experience of getting to know our featured guest up close and personal. Welcome to Pipe TV. I'm Jill Foster, your host, and today we have a really special guest in the house, Miss Isabella Cox of Isa Beauty. Hi, Isabella. How you Hi, doing? Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're in the house today, mostly because Isabella is a makeup artist, and anyone who knows me, makeup is my passion too. Mm. So, with that being said, I want to kick off our conversation, our mm -hmm. chat, all about makeup, <laughs> with the first question. Your business name is Is A Beauty. Yes. I love it because it's a spin on your name. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Well, I was looking up names of like what I would name myself and my father helped me create it with my name being the point of it. So I'm like, okay, so me and my mom decided we could just stick with that. Oh, okay, so your father's rather creative, huh? And your mom. Yeah. I guess that's where you got it from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, the next question I want to ask you is um, about your not just being a makeup artist. You actually launched your own business. Yes. And it's not just a name you came up with. This is a brand. Is a beauty is a brand. Yeah. So what made you do that? Well, I wanted some people to see me as more of like an artist mm -hmm. and want basically like to buy my art in a way. So that's the reason why. So they can get to know me more too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what types of... Um what types of Is A Beauty makeup do you do? Do you do avant-garde? Do you do like special effects? Well, you know, give us a little bit of background of what your creativity is. Okay, so I do basically anything and everything. So I just put it on my menu for like Sweet 16, like birthday party type, like for people who are 16 and under and who like makeup. So like they have like a makeup party because I recently did one and I really enjoyed it. It's like a beauty bar type Type of thing. Wow. So basically, they come up, get their makeup done, and each person gets gets their makeup done however they want it. And they, the um, person who organizes the party pay for each face mm -hmm. that's been done. So you go to Full Monty. It's like you promote it and you get people to come on board. Do you charge like a little fee when you're doing this type of stuff? Yeah, I charge a certain amount each time. It just depends on the look that they want and what they're going for. So it's just really different. That's great. You are a serious businesswoman. A serious businesswoman, not just a makeup artist. <laughs> if you were given just one tip to um, the viewing audience on what type of makeup or what type of product that they should always have, what would that one product be and why? Well, I would say moisturizer because skincare is key. So even if you're not wearing makeup, like after your makeup is all the way off, it's still like your skin will still look like it's still has makeup on it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I'm into skincare too. Mm. And um, one thing that I think that women should know is that they should take care of their skin because that is the foundation to beautiful makeup. It really is exfoliating and, and that yeah. sort of thing. So I'm glad to hear that you're serious about that. Yeah. Yeah, she's a serious makeup <laughs> artist, y'all. <laughs> What is your future aspirations? What do you have in the cooker right now with growing your brand well, and taking it to another level? I'm trying to start a magazine and I'm also trying to do a beauty calendar for next year. So each month I'm gonna take pictures of a makeup look that I wanna do for that month mm -hmm. for each model and then create a calendar for next year. Mm -hmm. You are so creative. <laughs> the, I guess all the ideas just keep flowing, huh? Yeah. I guess when you love makeup, you think about those things and see how you can just, you know, grow. Yeah. From it. Yeah. So um, I've enjoyed chatting with you. 
Thank you too, so much. I've enjoyed <laughs> chatting with you. I'm glad you're here. I want to welcome you back. But before we close out, yes. I want to make sure that our viewing audience know how to get in contact with you. Because look at this beautiful face <laughs> that she has. It's really pretty makeup. She's a businesswoman. She knows what she's doing. So how can they get in contact with you? You can get in contact with my Instagram, which is isabeauty1214. Or you can contact my Facebook page, which is the same thing, isabeauty1214. And everything else is there. Okay, well, thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. You've just been tuned in to Pipe TV. And until the next time, thanks for tuning in with me, your host, Jill Foster. Hi, you are tuned in to Pipe TV. I'm Jill Foster, your host, and I'm here today with a powerhouse who is an extraordinary producer and arranger, Mr. Paul Kaiser. He's also joined with him today, Miss Renee Connell, who is extraordinary in her own right. She is a gospel inspirational singer, an actor, and a writer. Recently, both Paul and Renee have joined forces and just about a year ago dropped a gospel album, which is Renee's freshman album. So I want to welcome them. Hi, Paul. Hi, Renee. how, how are, you? are you? Hi, how are you? Okay. That's great. Um, I'm so happy to have you guys here. I'm excited about sitting with you today okay. because as I mentioned in my opening, both of you are in, in extraordinary in your own right. So Renee, I want to start with you. Okay. So this is your freshman album. Can you explain to the viewers why you um, consider this to be your freshman album and how did you come along the journey to have this extraordinary producer work with you to produce the uh, album? Okay, um, I started out as a backup singer. Mm -hmm. okay. Originally uh, doing backup for Cool and the Gang, um, Paul Simon, uh, various artists. Wow. And in doing that, I met Mr. Kaiser. Okay. And I started out doing studio sessions for him for some of his other artists. Mm -hmm. And after we established a relationship down through the years, it, it got to be my turn. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and um, so how long have you been singing? Probably since infancy. Since infancy. <laughs> and when did you start on the journey of it becoming more of a career, of, of actually wanting to be, you know, in plays and, and singing and mm. writing? I think it was always in me. Mm -hmm. I think it's just who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far back as I can remember, I was always singing. Mm -hmm. And it may have started with um, watching TV shows where they would have singing and dancing, mm -hmm. like Fred Astaire and, and Ginger Rogers. My sister, my older sister, liked to watch those old movies, and I grew up mm -hmm. watching that. And I was always fascinated by that. So I would say the first time I actually sang in public was probably in school at, at, at a school program. And mm -hmm. then um, later on, when I got in high school, I was in a singing group, and then the group started doing backup for Cool and the Gang, and and it just you know went went on from there. Oh, okay, okay. So I also understand that you do uh, you've been in stage productions with Vi Higgins, and um, yes. What does the word alive mean to you? <laughs> and can you just explain to the viewers what that's all about? Okay, um, Vi Higginson mm -hmm. has a product, an off-Broadway production called yes. Alive 55 and Kicking. And I was fortunate enough to be selected to be in the cast. Now, this was a public audition. It was advertised on the radio and everything, so there were hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. And there was a lengthy audition process. And out of, out of hundreds of people, they narrowed it down to about 20 of us. So I was fortunate enough to be selected, to be one of the 20 people to be featured. Okay. And the show has been running uh, seasonally for about five years now. Mm -hmm. And early on, um, when the play first started, 
we were interviewed by 60 Minutes. And they only interviewed about five of us, and I was again fortunate enough to be one of the five yeah. to be to actually have the one-on-one -on -one, um, interview. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I did watch that segment, mm -hmm. and there is a particular song that you sing that had the men behind the scenes mm. teared up and crying, and they spoke about that in 60 Minutes. And it just goes to show you how powerful gospel and inspirational music is. But in addition to that, your voice, how you know it's a gift if you're touching people in that way. How did that make you feel? I'm always surprised by that mm -hmm. when people tell me that the song you're referring to from the show is If I Could. Mm. And, you know, after the show, we would go and, and just walk among the audience and mingle with them. And somebody would always come with a story about how it touched them. And I think the, the story that touched me the most was that a woman had to bury her um, infant child. Mm -hmm. And she had someone sing that at the funeral for her, for her baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, mm -hmm. you, you just don't know the impact you're going to have on somebody else. So I always appreciate it when somebody tells me how it makes them feel because it surprises me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to, um, well, before I shift gears to Paul, mm -hmm. how was it working with Paul? Finally, you got your turn. Was <laughs> it everything you dreamed it was going to be? <laughs> Paul is tough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a, he's, he's a nice guy, he's very laid back, he's calm, mm -hmm. but he's very serious. Mm -hmm. He's very serious about what he's doing. And I like to play around a lot, so yeah. I got on his nerves sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a, he's a great person to work with. He's a great person to work with. He's a, he's a genius. Yeah. And we actually work well together. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can feed off each other. We collaborated on 90% of the songs on my album. Mm -hmm. We wrote, we co-wrote 90% of the songs. Wow. So it was, wow. it was a great, great experience. So um, the track is nine in total, so mm -hmm. that's quite a bit that you guys uh, collaborated on together. That's great. Paul. Okay. Now, I called you an extraordinaire when it comes to producing okay. and arranging. And I don't say that light, lightly. Mm -hmm. I have to admit that I did not know who Paul Kaiser was, but after looking into who you are, mm -hmm. I knew you, but didn't know that I knew you, <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. Right. All of the different um, artists that you've worked with and the different music that you produced and arranged, you do jingles, mm -hmm. um, you have decades in this industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to, you know, briefly, we could be here until next week talking about it, <laughs> but if you can briefly mm -hmm. um, share with the viewers mm -hmm. your journey, where you came from, mm -hmm. and what you've done, and just highlight a couple of your favorite um, achievements that you've uh, accomplished on the way. Okay. Um, I started... Um about nine years old, my godfather was a Saxton and a church, Clare Memorial Methodist Church in um, Jersey City. Mm -hmm. And so he would have me to come in to dust the benches off. Probably was about eight years old. And I would go up in the choir loft and there was this organ up there. Mm -hmm. And I would mess around and I'd be playing that organ, just trying to figure things out. And um, one day Reverend Brown came in and he said, Paul, what are you doing? And I got nervous. I said, oh, this is dust in the benches. He said, don't worry about it. You can play as much as you want with that organ. Mm -hmm. Then my mother was a piano player. And so she would play and I studied, watched her. And then um, a lady across the street, she gave me piano lessons. So I, I learned that. I also played tenor sax. That was the beginning of my, my career. From... I guess eight years old, I know what, what I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be somewhere in, in music. I sung with a group, and we um, did shows. We won local talent contests. But I think that I more or less want to be behind the scenes. Yeah. And so um, I went on to um, as I was going to college. Well, before I went to college, high school, I did a couple songs. And how we 
got the message about your songs, you'd be on the street corner singing. And I would teach certain groups my songs. Come to find out they were on albums, <laughs> and I didn't know nothing <laughs> about it. So um, my first wow. record that I charted was a song called The Dawning of Love. Uh -huh. um, then a group called, um, um, let me see, the New Sound Express. I got a, uh, got a little hit record with that. But my my first big big hit was when I was in college and I was I sat down on a tree and I wrote this song called Body and Soul. That's the way it's got to be. <laughs> and um, uh, the group they were all from Jersey City. And so I took that song. I shopped it to every single record company in New York. Mm -hmm. I couldn't give the song away. Wow. And everybody turned me down. So I was too embarrassed to tell the guys I couldn't get a deal. Wow. So it was only nine cents a copy to press up. So I pressed up two thousand copies with my dorm telephone number on it, and I shipped it down to um, Baltimore, you know, in Washington. And the next thing I knew, one of the guys at my dorm knocked on the door and said, Paul, somebody named Jay Dudley want to talk to you. And he said, are you Paul Kaiser? And I said, yes. And he says, you got that record, Body and Soul? And I said, yeah. He said, you better press up a whole lot of records. And I said, why? He said, because that record is a hit. Yeah, and so the rest was history. I had family, I had people that worked with me. So I learned at that time, how well you can do in the music in, in the music business. Mm -hmm. Then uh, working with the Soul Generation and other songs, and then coming with um, a young group called Jimmy Briscoe and the Little Beavers, mm -hmm. My Ebony Princess, and Where Were You When I Needed You. And here's a story that no one know or really knew about. But during the time of the Jackson Five, I don't know if I should, say, but I'm gonna tell you, we were turned away from Soul Train. Wow. They never gave us a reason why. But That's interesting. Jimmy, if you take a look and listen to the catalog of Jimmy Briscoe and the Little Beavers, you'll understand why. He was everything, and I, believe me, I love Michael Jackson. He's the greatest singer, you know, of all time. But yeah. you look at Jimmy Briscoe and the Little Beavers, yeah. and he was everything that what Michael Jackson wanted to look like. Mm -hmm. Then I worked with Russell Thompson. I worked with Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was, actually when I was 18 years old, I could have had a chance to work in Motown. But I, but I didn't. I went on to... Um, Work with a group called um, uh, Rise. Uh, they we had a couple of hits with them, Storm. I also worked with Tony Orlando and Dawn. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I did things with the Three Degrees. I toured with them as their um, actually conductor. And I didn't didn't like traveling on the road, traveling in the, out of the country. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to go home, and um, they all hit my uh, passport, so I couldn't get out of the, <laughs> out of the country. And but back then it was easier, you know. Some people, some countries took passports, some didn't. Mm -hmm. And so we was out on the islands, and I said, do you take a check? And they said, yes, so I wrote a check, and I, I came up back home. Mm -hmm. I went on um, to um, produce um, a guy by the name of Terry Tate. I worked with um, a guy named M. Tume, and um, uh, in a room with Sly, and, mm -hmm. um, and some of the people who, um, you know, who were very, very talented people, you know. Yeah. So I, uh, I had that, I had that, that pleasure. Um, I could, I probably forgot uh, uh, as many as I produced. I did a lot of jingles, um, Christmas jingles. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when I started out in my career um, doing jingles, um, a guy was sick in the, uh, in the commercial house in New York, and so they asked me, could I come in? Mm -hmm. And once I got that spot, that guy never got a chance to come back. So as an arranging, as a, as a arranging conductor, I had to also go from doing live Live music with 50, 40, you know, 50 musicians. I had to do. I had to do like with, um, um, you know, computerized, you know, playing and, and computerized music. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did that. Um, we have to Terry Tate's having uh, um, a song, uh, "Babies Having Babies," and I did a thing called the Big Show, mm -hmm. where I did. I had the Shy Lights, Ray Goodman and Brown, the Manhattans. Um, wow. You name any group that's out there. Um, uh, Enchantment, other groups. I very, very successful. Yeah. Group. You did a really good job of uh, just kind of summarizing mm -hmm. some heavy hitters, and mm -hmm. you've had an extraordinary um, journey thus far, and you're still continuing. Yes, I am. I wanted to ask you, how was it for you working with with Renee? Working with Renee. <laughs> 
<laughs> was one the, the, the one thing about her, she's also a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I think something it was was What's excellent, uh -huh. she wanted to try harder. And there were you know times you know when she would say, "What's wrong with that?" But mm -hmm. we worked together uh, yeah. uh, very well. See, I mean, I could throw a track at her, music and something like that. I forget when they come back with something, <laughs> and I said she ain't gonna come back with nothing. And the next day she's back. I got the song right, you know. So yeah. she's that type of talent. Yeah. I just want to say, and now with my career, with like with Rick Ross, Ace mm -hmm. Hood, mm -hmm. um, R. Kelly, and um, uh, people like um, Joey Bad, ASS, mm -hmm. and all these rappers, uh, Ice T, they're all sampling my songs, the hits that I had from back in the yes, day. Yes, yes. Your name. So I'm yes. still, I'm still current and still okay. bringing out new artists. Yes, you are, you are, and I just, I'm, I'm really happy that you had a chance to really highlight mm -hmm. what it is that you do because sometimes people throw around words like mm -hmm. extraordinaire mm -hmm. and um, you know I just wanted our viewing audience to know that you know I'm not joking you are someone who's had a terrific journey uh, can you um, Renee um, answer this are you have anything else brewing and working with um, Paul here that we can look forward to in the future we are work collaborating on a project for another artist that he has. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there I, any? I would like to do a Christmas album too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will be looking for that because you have a beautiful <laughs> angelic voice. Well, now he has to do it. Now I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I just mentioned you have a beautiful voice. So, Thank you. Um, I will definitely get any Christmas album you get, <laughs> but and in. And having a beautiful voice, we're going to have you sing a song, so we're excited about that. Right. You're going to be singing Never Be the Same. Yes. And um, I well, know that there's a story behind it that it, mm -hmm. you, you already said that it would take too long to get people <laughs> to speed with it, but um, just, I guess the viewers need to really tune in so that we can figure out what that story is, but um, I'm really True. excited about hearing you sing but before we wrap mm -hmm. real quick I want you guys to let our viewers know how they can get in contact with you any social media platforms or anything you'd like to share um, you want to mm -hmm. go first okay I'm on Facebook as Renee Connell um, my website is my name uh, Renee Connell .com. <laughs> I'm on Twitter uh, Instagram everything is Renee Connell Okay, and Paul? I can be reached at um, Alpha Mix Recording Studios. That's my recording studio. Uh, dot com. So anybody who wants that, if you want to send a message, you can do that. Also, um, if you want to email me, email me at pkaiser63 at yahoo.com. That's pkaiser, K Y S E R 63 at yahoo.com. Thank you both for joining me in this studio today. Thank you for having us. Okay, thank you, my pleasure. You are tuned in to Pipe TV. I'm Jill Foster, your host, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Renee Connell, and I will be singing Never Be the Same from my album entitled, You Are a Shield for Me.
My name is Paul Kaiser. And my name is Renee Connell. And we, we just, just did an exciting, exciting interview, interview on, on Pipe TV. TV.